Okay, welcome back home racing fans. Good to see you all. I, uh, yeah, I'm a little late. <laughs> That's because I've been playing with these cars instead of doing my report on them. I'm guilty as charged. I just, I just couldn't wait for these cars. I mean, these vets have just, ever since they were announced, I just, man, I just could not wait to get them. I picked up a pair. I have a third one coming in. And uh, I, like I said, I, just, I have no excuse. I just couldn't wait. Just had to start having some fun with them, taking them out for some laps. I'm sure you've probably already seen it on Facebook, but we'll get a closer look here. But I can just tell you right now, just the presentation by Rebel Slot and everything they offer, well, you got to know, I love it. And speaking of the presentation, well, I kind of like the boxes of cars come in. Not everybody cares about such a thing, but I kind of like them. Keeps all the dust off and the parts underneath the tray, which is exactly where we're going to go right now, is we remove the car. Of course, we've taken the mounting screw out and we pull our little base out. And then inside, you'll notice, yeah, a few parts. And again, just like the Mercedes before it, I really like this. You'll notice here, there are no mirrors installed on the car. They are underneath, attached underneath here, and there's not one but two sets of mirrors. So you can glue them on there if you really want. I know some people talk about them being rubber. It's like, I don't need them to be rubber. Just don't install them, then they won't break off. So if you want them for photos or just for looking at, you can install them. Otherwise, like me, I'm just going to leave them off because, yeah, I'm just going to break them. Fit and finish, well, to me, uh, Rebel Slot is hard to beat. Just opaque, clean. Great paintwork. Excellent finish. Nothing's perfect, but Rebel Slot, they do a very, very good job. I'd be hard-pressed to find anybody that puts more effort into the overall finish of the car. Again, just my personal opinion. I think both of these cars, I have the number 64 car coming in, but both these cars look good. I just wanted to contrast. I didn't know I was going to get the third car, but, well, let's face it. Yeah, I did. As soon as I, as soon as I had these two, I thought, what am I doing? Get the third car, right? Anyway, just yellow, the white. This car, everyone's familiar with it. It just pops. It looks great. Scale-wise, again, good enough for me. I'll throw some numbers up there. You can do your own math. You know, they're not as super highly detailed as other cars before it. Some twenty-year-old cars, but I really don't care. I like the lightweight interior, and so do most racers. So I don't feel the need to change anything there. Just going to keep it just like that. And yes, you can see the dirt under here because I've already been playing with them. Like I said, guilty as charged. But on the outside, presentation-wise, these cars are, well, they're just a sight for sore eyes to me. This vet is just an icon of racing. It was a really big deal back then. Most of you that were fans of auto racing back then, you know, the new millennium and everything, you know all about how hot these cars were. Man, Fly and Carrera, I mean, they were just one, one cool slot car. And here they are again. And uh, like I've said before, this isn't your dad's fly car. <laughs> these things are made to go, so they go as well as they look. Anyway, just my three or four cents on the subject on how they look. I don't think any of you will be disappointed if you choose them. Just, uh, like I said, the fit and finish, eh, top shelf in my book. And another thing about that presentation, like I said, if you're just joining us, this is something to me that, you know, one of those things what you think is nothing, you know. It's like, well, man, Harry, it's not a big deal. It can be. Not everybody does this. Uh, Rebel Slot makes it easy for you to find the part numbers for spare parts. First of all, you have this exploded view of the car, and it has the part number listed right there, easy to follow. On the other side, you have part numbers here for 
different compounds of tires. So if you want to stick with the uh, stock rubber compound or maybe even some foams, then you have the part numbers right there. You have different floating brass nuts in different sizes, right? The rubber covers for the body posts, you can get them in different heights. So as we've talked about this before, you can order different heights cups that are different thicknesses right here at the end and that can adjust the body height so if you can lower it or you need to raise it it's something to think about anyway to me something like this even though it's just so simple just adds value and again if you're just joining us just a few tool reminders you're going to need a five millimeter wrench for these brass nuts right here i like my craftsman nut driver you can pick any brand you want any style you want but just make sure you get a good five millimeter and of course you're going to need a cross tip Phillips for the screws below. This lock our corner sells a kit basically has everything in it you need you're also going to need the 1.5 millimeter hex wrench and that wrench there is for all of your other screws like here on your wheels and your gear so you're going to need that it does come with your Phillips some lubricating oil and perfect and some grease and I'm glad that it does because there's a couple of things we'll go over. The Revel Slot Factory and some other folks online have been telling us that uh, right here, remove the nut there, make sure this area is clean, and just add a little bit of that grease right there. Helps keep the shoulder here of this nut lubricated and really helps make this nice and smooth and that you have a really good unobstructed float. So just a little bit, not a lot and it should go a long way. When you're tightening these up, I can tell you now, you don't have to super torque these down. Just, uh, just normal hand tight is all you really need to do. I've never had them back out. If you want to put some thread lock on there, um, you know, by all means you can. I've just, uh, and, you know, in all the miles I've put on some of these cars, I've, just, I've never had that issue, just as long as I made sure they were hand tight. And looking inside, I see no changes, and that's a good thing. 12 tooth pinion, 33 tooth spur gear. It's exactly what the other ones were. Good to go there. Plenty of float here on the chassis. So, won't have to do much here. Add a little bit of grease. That'll be a good thing, but you can see, just with no adjustment at all, we have plenty of float. I'll probably change out the guide to the deeper guide provided, but, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. It works... Uh, works pretty well just the way it is and you can see some holes here already cut for uh, for a digital chip and everything I don't know if it fits every chip that's out there I don't race digital but if you do you'll be able to tell right away anyhow like I say no major changes that means no drama and I like that so we'll talk wheels and tires for a little bit I know I'm just as excited as you are. Just something I want to share with you. Most veterans already know this, but just in case you didn't know, Revel Slot, well, they do make different size wheels for these cars. Of course, that makes perfect sense, but sometimes people get confused about what tire, you know, between the sizes of the wheels. And I can tell you, there's not much to worry about here, all right? So, for example, if you put these together, you'll notice that the recent Mercedes see okay you can tell the difference between it and the latest vet obviously a little bit smaller but is that a big deal not really so we'll take a measurement here of the wheel in between the flanges right here and just about 15.62 somewhere around there give or take a few millionth right right all right so that's the diameter for the Mercedes wheel now we'll go over here to oh, let me loosen this up and then we'll bring this back and we'll zero and we'll bring it right here there we go on this wheel and 14.82 so uh, just a little bit not a whole lot now the width of the flanges here on both cars are the same you don't have to worry about the width we were just talking about the diameter 
the width is right around right around nine millimeter there we go bring my mode here right around there you have to be careful when you measure this because you can creep up it has a slight bevel there so I got under the ye old spyglass there try to make sure it's as clean as it can be so right around nine millimeter width which is no difference they're both the same so what does that mean as far as tires go between the larger wheel and the vet wheel absolutely nothing <laughs> if you want silicone it's still my choice TS 43 for silicones the quick slicks they fit great and for Paul Gage tires if you want some urethane the 2012-5 LMDF that's just me but both tires fit the wheels just fine but as you'll see in the road test on this car like I say I like to change things up just to make things different from car to car sometimes class to class I'm gonna keep the stock rebel slot tires and see how I can get them to hook up so anyway those are your aftermarket tire solutions I hope they help you so just a reminder if you're going to use the stock tires please just take them off and inspect them make sure you don't have any flash molding it's actually quite common Let's just turn the tire inside out you can see it just a little bit there and I just take some nippers here you can use nail clippers anything you want I just like the sprue cutters and clean that flash molding off because I tell you it really can affect how the tire sits on the wheel you just don't need that extra sprue there causing the tire to raise you just don't need that in your life okay so <laughs> clean that up I know some older veterans out there that have been around the hobby a few times they want to know well how is it compared to the fly car well I can tell you now <laughs> there is no comparison at least to me uh, the fly car has uh, beautiful cars we loved them and they had excellent detail so uh, none of that's changed I mean the cars you know were just really nice cars not perfect either though were they and let's face it we uh, we had a fun time trying to get these to run but that's the important thing is we did have fun with them front motor or not we made these cars run and I have some that uh, you can't hardly recognize them there's been so many miles put on them so I'm not knocking it I'm just saying out of the box performance wise to run one against the other it's just there's just no comparison this car is built for racing it's, it's good looking too Rebel Sock cares about that but this thing doesn't hide the fact that it is built for performance to be raced fly on the other hand they could have cared less if you raced it or not it was just as much for collectors and looking at as it was for putting on the track so you know you could make them go especially with the little magnet back there they could go around the track but to get this to perform like this yeah, it's probably not going to happen not without a lot of modifications and I really don't see the reason for it because you have to know that Revel Slot is going to bring out as many versions of this mold as they can so who knows here in a couple of years uh, you might see this one right um, <laughs> come on I don't see why you wouldn't I mean you're gonna have to maximize the mold so you can see with other manufacturers they like to do theme cars you know Martini Jägermeister Warsteiner the list goes on so with all the uh, with all the actual decos and cars that can be done I'm sure you're going to see a lot more of this mold from Revel Sock. But there you have it. They're not far off. And yes, I mean, the wheelbase, if you wanted to try to build something to put a body on here, I'd say you're really close. Uh, more power to you if you want to try that. I know that there's 3D chassis available for the flies anyway. Maybe that would be an interesting matchup. But for me, uh, down here, it's just Rebel against Rebel. I'm happy with that. All right, well, just a few laps in box stock form, and uh, we're very impressed, very smooth, very responsive. And I think I'm going to keep the stock tires for his surface. 
and for my track, just for a variety. Sometimes it changes quick slick, sometimes Paul gauge, but I'm gonna stick with stock tires now. We've just got a handful of laps, but like I said, very impressive. Revel Slot's definitely uh, <laughs> made another, another winner in our book, so we'll give him a few more laps, but yeah, definitely recommended. <laughs> Leave it to me. Yeah, I tell you, both these cars are just fun. Box stock form. I've let the gears lap in a little bit with a little bit of polish. But that's it. I'm telling you, no other mods. No tires, no weight. As a matter of fact, I haven't even changed the guides out. I just left them the way they are lubrication check those set screws make sure everything's tight adjusted right put it back together and let it eat and that is one of the price of admission doesn't piss me off good quality they look great only thing they need, eh, is you, a good owner. Hope you guys have a great one. Be safe. Have fun. Look forward, as always, to hearing from you guys online.